Hi guys, this is the translation of the video I posted yesterday and it is to give a testimony, say how happy I am about my son turning three and just the blessing he has been to us and all the joys and experiences we've had since he was born and all the learning we've done just thanking God so much for his birthday, for his birth and the other reason of the video is to give a testimony of the things God has done in our lives and share with you all the details that sometimes we share in conversation but they're spread out and here the whole story will be easy to follow so first things first we didn't come to the United States um, as a means of having a better life or maybe because of Ian's education or this is more a clarification to my Brazilian friends but um, we were not seeking to move to a better place we were seeking to move to where we felt God leading us to leave Brazil was a lot of work we had a lot of things to sell we had a lot of things to get worked out before we could move and we really saw God's hands working in that situation helping us sell the big things especially the cars and um, all that was an experience for us to see God confirming his purpose for us and we, s we had a lot of help from friends and um, even to give the apartment back to the landlord we needed to to get everything moved out and we had a few friends help us doing that and all the help that my family gave us during the time we were there we're so thankful to those people and we know that God really is a source of our blessings so he was the one that supplied even that help to us and so we came to the States last December 12th, so yesterday was exactly one year. And we were coming for Laurie to be interviewed at a college. That was the hope we had, and that interview didn't happen that week, and it didn't happen the following week, and we thought, well, it's the holidays, and hopefully at the beginning of January this will happen and January came and still no interview and Larry was, start, was starting to look for other jobs but we didn't have anything we had one open door for a few months down the road which was in Charlotte and Charlotte was one of the top cities in our list of cities to consider to live in and that was only for the summer so we still had like six months to go and we would need to find a job I couldn't find a job because I didn't have my employment authorization and Larry um, was trying but it was not being so easy now I was expecting to have a green card interview in February in Rio in Brazil um, that came well went down the drain in January when I got a letter from it was not the Department of Immigration at that time it was National Visa Center saying that there was one document they needed me to send again that after I found out and called and figured out what really was the, situ the situation really was would put us like four months or just about uh, behind in the process so talking to some friends here in the States they said that I probably would be better off starting the process from here so there we went gathering all this paperwork it was 85 pages I believe uh, total I've said this number quite a few times I believe that's exactly right but it, anyway it was 80 some and we finally did send everything out to be um, in the process from here and not have to go back to Brazil. Now I did have some plans for February, one of them was my um, short-sightedness surgery. 
I actually forgot to uh, put that in the testimony in Portuguese. Um, that ended up not happening in February because I couldn't go, and then I now couldn't even leave the United States because I didn't have... I was pending on a green card um, request, and that means you can't leave the United States. Except for over death, serious illness, or educational or business purposes, which I didn't really have any of those. So, finally I, since I have a company in Brazil, or a business license, I came up with some things I would do there, and I did have some students to go teach and visit, so I ended up making an event to do that, and I applied for an authorization to leave the country. My sister was getting married in November this year. She just got married last month. It all did work out. So, Ian was going to be the ring bearer. Larry was going to play the flute. We needed to be in that wedding. And although they could still go even without me, it's my sister's wedding. So I, I was very um, upset at one point with even the idea that I might not be able to go. Like, I'm, if I go... I would be throwing away the whole process because by the time I got back I would probably be disqualified I might have been banned from like the country and it's some serious complications so um, we started praying for that authorization for me to be able to leave um, then um, I would also like to throw in that it was a blessing to be able to be with my parents-in-law during those two months that we were with them. Um, we didn't have anything when we came in. We didn't have a house, we didn't have a town, we didn't have a church, we didn't have many friends, we didn't um, know much about our future life. And they received us, they uh, like adapted their house for us and we, we were there could have been longer and it was a blessing to have like an organized home to come to and like not have to deal with any more than we already had to deal with so thank you to them and again to God because he also gave us that now we started thinking about North Carolina and Virginia again like the decision had been more toward Charlotte, since we had that open door, which Larry would be able to be on a career switcher program there, and the um, history or like the stats for the people that went through that program and got a job were awesome. Like, actually, I think it's at 100%. So, I think they have very high needs there. So, she would pr most definitely get a job, and we were very happy with that situation. But then, like checking more about the education system in North Carolina, the conditions of the schools and like the teachers uh, reporting how it was, we started thinking more about Virginia and also because Virginia um, location-wise for us was always a much better choice because it's very or much closer to Larry's parents hometown and where they live so we started thinking about Virginia again. Now, I want to further my education, I want to complete um, a bachelor's degree, and we thought that Blacksburg or Charlotte would be the best choices. Roanoke had been our best, our top choice of city to live in for a long time. Like, we even have some account passwords that include, like, something relating to Roanoke. That was uh, from, like, years ago. So, we... We went in Roanoke, but we thought I couldn't do anything education-wise here in Roanoke. Well, Larry found out that there was a career switcher program for the state of Virginia. Now, we didn't know about the, the chances of getting a job after that program, and we did know about North Carolina. Plus, she was already pre-enrolled in the North Carolina one. She would have to find all the information and see which universities and try to figure all that out very soon because the programs were um, starting and we had a deadline to say yes or no to Charlotte and we didn't have anything quite figured out yet about 
the career switch for Virginia, but we did have a very good idea and just thinking more about the purpose for uh, over why we came, which was to be close to family and then really wanting to be closer than four hours away, which would be Charlotte. Um, we decided that we wanted to stay in Virginia and we were going to try to stay in Roanoke or Blacksburg to live. And Larry had to take some tests for that program and uh, one time we were in Roanoke taking a test and I went to the higher ed center which is downtown and uh, a lot of schools, universities are represented there and have classes there so I wanted to go check it out for myself. Now I went to the UVA uh, floor and I talked to a lady there that was very helpful. She told me everything I could do. Actually there wasn't much for me at the UVA but then I also shared my, situ my wife's situation um, with her and then said that my wife wanted to get in the school system here. She was looking for a job and she was looking into doing the career switcher program and taking the test and everything and she said you know what and I, I said do you think maybe she could go visit the administration to try to meet somebody and see if they have any needs right now maybe like a subbing position and she said oh I'll, I would do that and I came and told Lareem and she said oh and I'll be willing to talk to your wife about her situation more I've worked for the administration of the uh, city schools here and she actually had worked with the career switcher program too so it was like a really god-given opportunity to me for me to be talking to that lady and so Larry did go and talk to her and then Larry did go and try to talk to somebody at the administration um, now the person that was in charge of what she needed was not there but she was given a name and a number to call and the name the last name was not a very common one and it was the same as the um, band director that had been with her during all the years of high school she had actually worked for him she um, she knew him um, very well and she thought I wonder if they're the same family anyway she called the person and it turned out that they were actually siblings they were brothers and he told her about a job fair that was going to happen in Salem very soon. Well, Larry comes, Larry, Ian and I, we come one day for the Salem fair. I think we, st yeah, we were staying here uh, at least for a night. And she met very important people because he helped hook her up to the people that needed teachers, which was source for teachers to talk about a sub position and they actually had a long term sub position which is much better than a day to day subbing um, job because well not only do you not have to be going to different schools, different classes, different grades every day and maybe not having work some days but you also get paid more per day so that was a big blessing they they were in need of that and then it only took them a few days they contacted her I think like the next business day and then it started the process for her to be hired so we were very excited about that now we had had some dinners with uh, good friends of ours Jeremy and Brittany and in one before Christmas or after Christmas 2014 they had said that they had been here in Roanoke for a few months and they were looking for a church they still hadn't found one they had some criteria like they wanted a church that was involved with the community, they wanted a church that actually read the Bible, they wanted a so a very biblical church, a, like a few things that were the same things we were looking for in a church. Now we didn't even have a town so we weren't really looking for a church but um, when we got this job which was for Source for Teachers, Roanoke City, we um, got them um, scheduled for a dinner and then we told them about the news that we had gotten a job and we were going to move to Roanoke then because that was our the place we wanted to be in so that was a big praise the Lord and we told them and they said oh and we found a church and they told us about New Century 
a community church and we were just spending the weekdays here in Roanoke and we were going back to West Virginia every weekend and we went to a Bible study on Wednesday and we really liked the church we we met some people it was very small very different from what we thought we thought it was like a, a worship service on Wednesday and it was a Bible study but anyway so that was great we we possibly found a church by then and and uh, let me try to find out where I am in my notes. So, okay, so we were living in hotels for three weeks during that time. Um, we started that week that she started after the dinner. And then we spent one more week in a hotel. And then we were getting pretty tired of it. And we spent a third week in a hotel. And... During that third week, we did go and see some places that we could possibly rent. And I remember I found there was a, a basement in the Southwest. And I wanted to just get it because it was a monthly contract. And I really didn't want to sign for 12 months because a dream of ours has been that we wanted to buy a house. Like we have been trying to buy a house for a few years now since... The prices went down, we and interest rates went uh, to the bottom. We wanted to take advantage of that opportunity, and we weren't living here, so we thought we would buy and rent it out, and then when we came to live in the States, we would, well, then move into that house. And that kept not happening. Last year, we came, and we actually went house hunting again, and we found one, like a very cheap one, in a very rough neighborhood of Roanoke. We didn't know... Uh, things very well anyways and we just wanted to make the sacrifice of location and even house to just be able to buy something and have a cheap mortgage that we could afford and not be worried about and well so that was our goal and we would have to have Larry's parents help us and they were willing so we thought maybe we, sh we would but then we started we left the States last August 2014. We started not having that strong of a desire to buy that specific house anymore after we were in Brazil and just considering things and that just um, was dropped. So anyway, I'll, I wanted to just move into that basement because it was month to month and um, we could afford it and we I just didn't want to stay at a hotel in hotels anymore. Now, Larry was like, but there are no windows, and the one bathroom that they had was not a bathtub, and we really wanted a bathtub for Ian to take shot baths in. And so, we looked some more. Now, that Saturday, after the third week staying in hotels, Larry got some um, places for us to look at the next Monday, which was going to be President's Day. Um, and I, for the last time, decided to just check some houses for sale, just, I guess, to see, maybe like, what if there was a miracle price that maybe we could get a really high interest rate at a bank that wouldn't require us to have all the things that banks require, and then we could, I was just like, trying to see one more time. And I saw this house that was very, uh, it was all I wanted. I told Larry it was my dream house, and I saw the pictures, loved it, and the price was great, so I said, I won't even show you the pictures, Larry, but I saw my dream home, and it's so affordable, but I'm not even going to get our hopes up. So, we didn't, and on Monday we came and saw some houses on President's Day. Very stormy, a lot of snow on the ground, I almost hit a stop sign making a right turn and we came to the first showing which was that one and we really liked the house well the house was for sale too and I talked to the landlord he said he might um, I asked like would you do like a direct sale maybe like owner financing or uh, rent to own with us and he said he would be open to talk about that and got very excited and then um, we got the contract to fill out and send back to him and we, 
I was doing some research like about schools and things to see if we actually would consider buying this house and it turned out we would and I came across some photos on the internet and the photos were of the same house that I had seen earlier on Saturday and I had told Laurie it was my dream house and I didn't even want to show her it was the same house so that made that was a confirmation for us because we had now moved to the town we wanted and the house seemed to be a, a confirmation of the whole situation too All right, I'll have to break up here because it's getting really long but I'll post a few more videos to finish the testimony <laughs> thank you guys and God bless he's a good God all the time he's blessed us and I just want to be thankful publicly